Thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated if you can. I'm still trying to learn English, you know, so forgive me. But thank you so much, Pastor Kola. It's been a, a wonderful time. And I, I bless God for all the nice things. You know, normally when people are saying nice things about me, I like it. <laughs> you know, there are Christians, when people say nice things about you, so, you know, that's a skinny good mentality. You know, when a prodigal son went and came back, you know, his elder brother was very angry. He didn't like it at all. And he said, I've been with you all this while you never gave me a skinny goat. You know, and the father said, everything has been yours. And sometimes we have skinny goat mentality. You know, you sing very well and people applaud you. Oh, you've done very well. It's not me, it's the Lord. The Lord didn't sing. You sang. Just be happy. So me, when, when people say I'm good, I like it. I mean, <laughs> because, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I just, I, I like it. So I, I didn't want him to stop, but unfortunately I did. You know? I'm trying hard to forgive him. <laughs> but I uh, thank you so much. I've totally enjoyed myself in NCA. Thank you so, so, so much for having me. <laughs> Pastor Data, God bless you. Thank you for the hospitality. They've taken super care of me. And I'm so grateful. And thank you, Brother Tokwe, too, for looking after me. He's been wonderful. He, he got me out this morning. He was so sharp. I said, <laughs> the man is so sharp, man. And uh, we, he introduced me to the Canadian morning weather. And, uh, and I'm also trying to forgive him, but... Uh, Thank you, thank you so much, and um, I, I bless God. Again, greetings from my wife who spoke, and she said for me to give uh, greetings to all of you. She's doing very well. And like Pastor Kola said, uh, we've, we've had this journey for these, almost these 40 years. Um, and I know some of you, when you hear that, you are trying to calculate in your mind, how old is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, we married when we I think she was two years old, and I was <laughs> something, something. And uh, like he said, you know, I think all over social media, we've had this issue with uh, this abuse that ended a woman's life. And it's very painful. And, um, you know, beating up somebody is not an indication of how strong you are. I mean, if you're able to go beat Mike Tyson, I will applaud you. <laughs> you know, and, and so we, we really need to um, appreciate that. And sometimes, too, you know, when this situation, these situations go on, the power of the abuser is in the silence of the victim. The silence of the abuser. The, the power of the abuser is in the silence of the victim. So you need to speak up before they kill you. You need to speak up. Amen. It says that a living dog is better than a dead lion. So you need to live. Nobody has the ministry of killing people. Am I talking to somebody? And like Pastor Kola said, you know, you, 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 you marry, and that, that's why you need to pray, take your time, and get married. You know, when, when I don't know about today's generation, you know, this cartoon generation, I don't know about you, but <laughs> maybe you're wondering, when is he going to start preaching? Like, you, if you're home Friday, I've already started. You know? <laughs> because the message is not very long, so I have to say all these things to get there. So. But, Pastor Kola, you know, my time, when, when, when I was getting married, what you saw was what you got. Today, you never know. <laughs> now, don't start me this morning. Don't, you see, when, when I keep quiet like that and I smile, that kind of smile, I know there's all kinds of things running through my mind. Honestly, today, you never know what you get. That's why, men, you have to respect women. You have to because women are the only creation of God who can improve on God's creation. Oh, yes. They do. God, listen, God gave them eyebrows. They say, God, wait. Wait. We want to show you. Say, God, you stand here. You stand here and watch me. Then they take their own sharp blade. Then they take away the one God gave to them. Then they take their own prince and say, now, God, look at me. Then they design the essence and say, how about that, God? And all the women said, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. So, well, we've done this thing for 40 years and it's been a wonderful thing. If I had the opportunity to marry a thousand times, I'll marry the same person all over. Amen. All over. And let me, let me submit here that we have never fought. Wait, 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 wait. No, don't clap yet. We've never fought. We've only had a few intensive moments of fellowship.
And sometimes she really annoys me because she won't mind me. And one time I told her, you know you are annoying me by ignoring me so that I get annoyed by you annoying me. <laughs> sometimes she will just find out where I'm sitting and just come and pass so she can ignore me. <laughs> but I thank God for everything. Anyway, bless her. Are you ready for? Well, I think we have, we've, we've already started. So, you know, uh, this is boot camp and we bless God for everything. And uh, you, unless you are living under a rock, you have to agree with me that we are living in very, very, very interesting times. This, these past few years have been very trying, especially with this COVID-19 thing. And they are telling us all kinds of variants and things which I don't pretty much care for that because Jesus is still Lord. But just when we were trying to get our breath back, Somebody at the other side of the world in Europe decides to start a war of attrition. And that tells us that every decision that somebody makes affects somebody else. Never forget that. No one is an island. And we are all going through all the things that we are going through, you know, and gas prices, bread prices, everything. And um, I, I sense there's so much despair in the world today. So much despondency, fear, anxiety, frustration. And unfortunately, even in the church of Jesus, I travel quite a lot, and I, sometimes the, the feeling of, of fear and despair is so palpable, the hopelessness. But today, the Lord sent me to somebody, I don't know about everybody, but he sent me to one person here today to let you know that no matter what is happening in the world today, there is still hope for you. Uh, where did I hear the laugh from? I, I, where is the amen? I said, I said there, there's, 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 um, there's still hope for you. It's not the hope in a thing. It's not the hope in a system. It's not the hope in a government. It is the hope in one person who is the concrete line of the tribe of Judah. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. When the lights are out, he says that I am the light of the world and anybody who follows me will never walk in darkness. When your friend has turned their backs on you for no reason, he made you a promise that I'm a friend that stays closer than a brother. When you have lost everything, he's on record as saying that I am the restorer. And he said, even the ones that you Yourself, you have wasted. I, the Lord, I am on record as saying, What the palmer, the cacao, and the caterpillar, and the locusts have eaten, I will restore it to you. So, hear me, ladies and gentlemen. No matter what situation you find yourself in, Jesus has made his promise, and his promises will never lie. He is the only one, ladies and gentlemen, who says that I am not a man that I should lie, neither am I the son of man that I should repent. The reason is that many of us we make promises that we know that we will never keep because our mouths are signing checks that our hearts will never cash. But he never gets up to make you a promise that he doesn't intend to keep. Because before he even made a promise, he has kept it already. Because that is the kind of God that I said. Before your beginning began, he has already finished your end. That is why one of the saddest mistakes you can make is to give up today when there's something called tomorrow. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Your future is bright in Christ. He has secured you and no amount of trouble, no amount of fear that the enemy brings against you can stop you. I like, I, like, I like the little thing that, you know, Pastor Kola taught us about, about having insight. Because hear me, when, when you have inside knowledge, you don't panic. You don't worry. Because I have observed that many times your breakthrough is locked up in realms that you've not been able to access yet. And the thing about it is that it doesn't matter how big a lock is. If you can have a key, no matter how small, you can assess what is behind it. Some time back, I took my dad to the Tower of London, you know, where England, uh, they keep all the jewels, the crown jewels that they stole from everywhere, you know. <laughs> they keep them there. And uh, the, the, the guy who was giving us the tour took us to where the queen had all her, her, her crowns and tiaras and, and everything. And you, the, the thickness of the door, man of God, was like, and he told us it can withstand even an, a, a bomb, a nuclear weapon. But you know the interesting thing? Opening the vault was, he had just a small key. Then it dawned on me that if you have keys in this life, no matter what is locked behind, you can access it. That is why you need to find that peace. When the world is going mad, you must have keys to enter into peace. When the world is afraid, you must have keys to enter into security. When the world is walking under crisis, you must have the keys to walk in blessing. Because I believe that God in this season wants to download some things into your spirit that will make you extraordinary. 
that will make people wonder, how are you able to handle this? Why are you so cool under pressure, even though the whole world is going, going bonkers? Listen, he said in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 2 and 3, he said, I, the Lord, I will go before you, and I will make the crooked places straight, and I will give to you the treasures of darkness. I will give to you the treasures of that, which means there are treasures, but they are in darkness. May the Lord open your eyes to see, oh my God. I said, may the Lord open your eyes to see it. And the hidden riches in secret places. Hear me. I've traveled to nations in this world. I've been to some nations that are desperately poor. And yet in those nations, they were millionaires. That is why the world economy must not affect you. One time during, I think, the Obama time, you know, there was this recession, one of God, and things were happening. I stood in shoe leather in my church, and I told them there's a recession, but I refused to take part. I say it, and you have to go home to process it to understand. And today is Palm Sunday. And I've been thinking about us as charismatics and Pentecostals or whatever we call ourselves, that sometimes we are not very good with the Christian calendar. So there are some of the things that we can be questioned about and we have no clue. So we need to think about these things. They are, they are put there within the calendar to, to let us understand where we are coming from. Because a lot of people's Christianity is nothing but churchianity. You need to understand this thing. And my concern is that there are people who go to church day by day, Sunday by Sunday, weekday by weekday. We go to seminars, we go to meetings, we go to conferences. But we don't have a true understanding of who this Jesus is. Who is this Jesus? Why did he come? And what does he do? Even right now, as he's alive, seated at the right hand of the, God, of the Father. What, that's why I thank God for boot camp. So we can go back and have an understanding of the things that Jesus, of who Jesus is and what he does. Because our faith must be secure. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, you know, the first two verses, he said, when I came to you, I did not come with just excellency of speech or wisdom declaring the testimony of God. For he said that I determined not to know anything amongst you except Christ and him crucified. That's all I want. So as we enter into this season of Easter, let us not forget that this thing is all about Jesus. Um, I'm going to turn around like this. It's called Rewind. I said it's all about Jesus. Uh -huh, yeah, I, re I rewind the tape so that you can say it again. I said it's about Jesus. Pastor Kola, your people, you didn't want them. They've started again. They're staring at me. I don't like that. I'm a very shy man. I don't like that at all. You know, the way you are looking at me, I don't know what you are thinking, but you know the drill. If you're here on Friday, not somebody must tell you. So you better think good. But Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. I said he is the hope of the world. Not an empty hope, but that endless expectation that no matter what you are going through today, Jesus will bring you a breakthrough. Amen. He's a specialist when it comes to your trouble. And I know that this, this week, this week, and as we go into next week, there are some tumors that will disappear yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. There are wombs that will open supernaturally. Yeah. There are sperm counts that will come up supernaturally. Yeah. I am making some declarations over your head because I am empowered by the Spirit of the Lord to let somebody know that this season that you have entered in your financial situation is going to turn around. Your relationships are going to turn around. The world war in your family has come to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, the Lord showed me that there's somebody who haven't slept for a while, but from tonight you are sleeping like a baby, that the alarm clock may not even be enough to wake you up. You have gone through a lot of trouble, that itching on your skin and your hair falling off. And I'm saying that by revelation, that God is about to do something in your life that will surprise you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, in the Bible, everyone or anyone that encountered Jesus had a destiny-altering experience in their lives. And I want to say to somebody in NCA today and watching me online, that whatever life may have dealt to you that is unpleasant, Jesus says that it is not going to end this way. I said it's not going to end this way. And we are going to look at the life of a man who had a life-transforming encounter with the Lord Jesus that turned him from a hated individual 
to become a man that Jesus affirmed. That is the kind of God that you and I serve. In Luke chapter number 19, very familiar guy. I'm sure you've met him before. In Luke chapter 19, the first 10 verses, every children's Sunday school person knows that. Zacchaeus. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was the chief tax collector. And he was rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was. But could not because of the crowd, for he was of a short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay in your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, that is the church, that number seven is the church. When they saw it, they all complained, saying, he's going to, the, to be a guest with a man who is a, a sinner. That's the church. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. Because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Father, speak your word into our house today. Lord, I, I approach the word with humility in my heart, knowing that your words are anointed from heaven. Wear me like a coat and use me to do good to your people. Not one man, not one woman, not one boy, not one girl that hears the sound of your servant must live here the same. Refresh us, new, new, renew us, rejuvenate us. Revive us. Let the scales fall from our eyes. Intelligent Holy Spirit, we ask for your help. Help to execute this mandate today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me give you a little background. Jesus was very, very, very deliberate and intentional in his life and in his ministry. When you study him closely, you realize that for the first two and a half years of his earthly ministry, he ministered in the northern part of Israel. He ministered in the northern part. You know, that is why sometimes his brothers will even tell him that if you, are, if you think you are that good, why don't you go south where Jerusalem is and go and show your power? But Jesus was very intentional. He was never hurried. He was on course. He was on purpose. And so towards the end of the two and a half years, getting to the third year, where he was beginning to end his earthly ministry, he started moving down south towards Jerusalem. He set his face like a flint towards Jerusalem. And if you've ever been in those areas, you realize that you have to, for, when you're coming from the northern part, one of the gateways into the south was Jericho. Jericho was a gateway where whenever people went to trade in Syria and all those places, you had to come through Jericho to be tasked before you entered into Israel proper, into Jerusalem proper. And so Jesus made his way towards Jerusalem. That is, that is where he was going to end, as it were, his earthly life as a sacrifice for you and I. And he entered into Jericho and the Bible says that there was a whole lot of crowd that followed him. And amongst the crowd was a man called Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus, I'm sure, is somebody that we all may have heard about. There were some things about this man. Number one, the Bible says that he was a chief tax collector. Worked for Revenue Canada. Chief tax collector. And you may not understand that unless I explain it a little bit to you. In those days, Israel was under the dominion of Rome. And Rome would exact taxes from them. They would tax everybody. In fact, it was a result of taxation matters that Herod was ordered to let everybody go into their hometown to be taxed. And God used that to send Mary away from Nazareth to Bethlehem in order to fulfill scripture. That is God. And what Rome did was that Rome did not stipulate to the task, uh, to, to the, to the task collectors how much they had to charge. They only say everybody pay $10. And that is what they told the task collectors. And then the task collectors would come and tell the people, everybody pay 20 So that every time they tax people, they had a large cut to themselves. And so because of that, they became very wealthy. That is why the Bible says that Zacchaeus was a chief collector, tax collector, and he was rich. He was making money off the people. And in the light of that, he became extremely disliked because the people hated the tax collectors. They were Jews who were doing the, the work 
For the Romans, they were instruments of oppression. So the people hated them. And I realized that Zacchaeus did not have a spectacular call like some of us, well, I met the Lord on the mountain or the Lord entered my bedroom, that kind of thing. He wasn't a very, he wasn't a physically desperate person. But he had a desperation that drove him to Jesus. Sometimes we think that it is only the people who have desperate needs who need Jesus. But the truth is that we all need Jesus. Zacchaeus had money. He had influence. He had clouds. He had a house. But he needed Jesus. Please listen to me. No matter who you are, no matter your pedigree, no matter your degree, you may have more degrees than a thermometer. You still need Jesus. Never forget that. Because sometimes we come to church to pretend. The church is the only hospital that sick people go to pretend they are well. There are people, you meet them, and even a blind person can see that it's not going well. And you ask them, how are you? I'm all right. How are, everybody's an amorite in the church. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm all right. We become amorites in the church. But God cannot help the person who cannot admit that they are in trouble. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. We need Jesus in our lives like never before. You can see that my emphasis today is on this Jesus. Because when we leave Jesus, what else have we got? What is the alternative? It's like somebody told me the other day, Pastor, I'm tired of this Christianity. I can't. And I said, I agree with you. But what is a better alternative than this Jesus? When Jesus asked his disciples, after thousands of people have eaten the bread and the, and, and the fish and have left, he asked the disciples, will you also go away? And Simon Peter said, where else have we got to go? Out? Where, where else have we got to go? I've watched you. We have observed you that you are the only one who has the words of eternal life. And that is why we follow you. What is your motive for following Jesus? Why do you go to Jesus? Why do you, why do you run after him? If it's only for things, then you are living for a very little reason. Because we all start our lives following Jesus in a, trans a transactional way. Some of you would never have followed Jesus if the witches in your family had not threatened you. When your little bedroom became a zoo and all kinds of animals were chasing you, you ran to Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? amen. You, you know what I'm talking about? There are some of you like that. You know, you, 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 you eat about four times a day. <laughs> are, are we fasting during boot camp? Oh, okay. Because there's nothing more dangerous. You know, sometimes when we are fasting, there's nothing more dangerous than people who are fasting and putting on weight. <laughs> I put, sometimes I want, I, sometimes I told my church, we have to put a scale at the front of the church. <laughs> By the third day, we have to weigh you. Because when you are, get, get, you are putting on weight in spite of fasting, there must be something wrong. Because fat, fasting is very powerful. So when they call for fasting, please fast. Have you noticed, Christians, the moment we say fast, the first thing, when are we breaking? <laughs> have you realized that? Fasting is very powerful. Only three people said amen. May the Lord bless you. It's a, it's a discipline that we need to do. You know where most of you came from? People die because, uh, people die for food. But here people die because of food. <laughs> you understand it after I'm gone. But sometimes fasting can be interesting, Pastor Kola. Have you realized that you, sometimes you are fasting? You are minding your business. You are speaking in tongues. You are taking authority and dominion. You are sending angels on assignment. They don't even come back to report, you know. And you, you, you know all those terminologies that you go through. And you walk through your, your, your kitchen and the fridge opens by itself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is called warfare. This is warfare. You want to check the miracle, then some food will just jump and attack you in your mouth. You close your mouth to protect yourself and realize you've eaten. But hear me, we all need Jesus in our lives. We cannot have a life without this Jesus Christ. And Zacchaeus may not be quote-unquote needy in your classic terms like today. If he lived in Canada, we say the man has got it made. He has made it. He's okay. That is what everybody wants to run after. But Zacchaeus, in spite of everything that he had, and maybe I don't know who I'm talking to today, you may have everything going for you, but you need Jesus Christ. So there are four quick things that I want to give to you and I'll step out of your way about Zacchaeus that we can take some lessons out of. Number one, Zacchaeus 
was hindered by a personal challenge. He was hindered by a personal challenge. The Bible says that he was of a short stature. His height, his physical stature was his calling card. Now, please know that the man being short was not a disability that needed biblical mention. Because there are people in the Bible that were not very imposing. In fact, St. Paul the Apostle, that great writer, the one who handkerchiefs and aprons from his body could heal the sick, the one who went to the third of heavens and came back to, to, to tell us a little bit about the things that he was not even allowed to talk about. He was just about four foot something. He wasn't, he wasn't so please, be, be, being tall or something doesn't say a lot about everybody. One time this lady came to me, she really wanted to get married and I said, listen, let's be specific. What are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for a man who is about six foot tall he makes six figures, and he has a six pack, and I said, that's the Antichrist. <laughs> that's the Antichrist right there. That's the Antichrist. <laughs> now, don't look at it. Don't look at anybody. Don't spoil my message for him. Don't. Can you just listen to instructions? Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Don't, he may look like him, but he's not him. You know, he said, I want a six-foot guy. I want six figures, and I want a six pack. I said, that's the Antichrist. That's what he want. But listen, but for Zacchaeus, his stature was a challenge. And maybe there's somebody hearing me today. You, your life is locked up in something that is perceived as a personal challenge. Maybe it's a weakness that you are not proud of. It's something that happens and you hate yourself in good measure. It makes you miserable. You promise yourself I'll never do it again and yet you find yourself doing it. It's a debilitating sin. It's a weakness. It's an anger problem. It's something. And it's, it, it, you have been known for that. Maybe it's an emotional struggle that has affected your relationship. You can't keep friends and friends can't keep you. There's something that comes upon you that turns you into something that you know you are not. You have cried. You have sought God. You have gone to counseling and yet this thing will just not leave you. And you look at yourself and you wonder, does God like me? Why am I like this? Why can't I become like somebody else? Maybe it's something that keeps repeating itself in your life over and over and over. People do things and they take it easy. You do the same thing and it just doesn't go well. And you are noted for that. Because in this life, people tend to attach your mistakes to who you are. But let me tell somebody here, you are not your mistakes. You are not what you've been through. Anybody heard of the woman with the issue of blood? Anybody wave your hand? I have a question, did she get healed? Then why are we still calling her the woman with the issue of blood? Because that is human nature. Human beings always want to attach you to the last place that they found you. But I'm here to announce you that from today, they'll look for you and never find you again. Because they saw you when you were going through all the things you were going through. They saw you when your face was to the wall. They saw you when your car had been repossessed. They saw you when you lost your job. They saw you when you couldn't even put two, two cents together. But I'm here to announce you that it takes God no time and no effort to change your life around. I think about the man who was a supplanter. Who, who the man was a 419 guy, if you like. If you dealt, I mean, he can sell you the whole of London Bridge and add some few. The, he's the only man, Jacob, I am sure he can even sell sand to the Saudi Arabia. And yet one night he met God by the brook of Jabok and he turned his life around. He still carried the limb, but God had turned him from a supplanter to become a prince with God. And that should be somebody's story today. It doesn't matter what people think they know about you. It is only what God knows about you that matters. People can call you all kinds of names, but it's only the new name that God gives you that matters. They can call you alcoholic. They can call you drunkard. They can call you anything. But in the name of everything that is holy, I've come to announce that if anyone be in Christ. That person becomes a brand new creature. All things have passed away and behold, everything has become new. They thought they knew you yesterday but you are a brand new person. There are some names you must never answer to again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter your personal challenge, my brother, my sister, Jesus is bigger than that challenge. And the beautiful thing is that he is not intimidated by your challenges. Anything that you consider your disqualification, that is what he will use to raise you up. Don't look down on yourself. Don't look down on where you are coming from. Don't look at all the mistakes you've made. And let people say, you can't be anything. Pastor Kola, when I got born again, when I got born again, there were some of my mates in school who traveled from places to just come and see whether it's true. 
Because you are looking at a person, listen, it, when the devil told me to sin one, I'll sin three to the glory of his name. Oh yes, you, that, that is why I look at people and I laugh. Sometimes, you know, I, I don't really like telling my testimony because it might almost sound like entertainment. That is why I take my mandate serious. Because I know where, some of you sing the song, he brought me out of the Mary Clay. I don't, when you sing it, I don't sing it. I feel sorry for you. He didn't bring me from the Mary He mined me. He went down. He, he, for, 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 he brought me, he went down and he brought me out. That is the kind of life. I, I, I don't see myself as qualified. When I got born again, I hid myself at the back of the church. Because I felt unworthy. I felt terrible. I, I felt that how could this one die for me? And I, I, I observed people doing the work of God. And I asked myself that, have they been forgiven like I have forgiven them? Why are they doing God's work like this? The reason why some of you behave the way you behave in church is that you don't know what you have been saved from. You have no idea. I kid you not. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus will never disqualify you. Let, let me, let me, let me. When, when, look, look at the 12 men that Jesus picked. Who qualified? Jesus calls these 12 guys and says, guys, we are going to take over the world. And they look at each other like, what world? Jesus said, the whole world, I'll take you. And somebody said to Jesus, you know what? These guys that you've chosen, you need to take them to a consulting agency. Let them interview them and see whether they qualify for this assignment of world domination. So somebody recommended the Jordan management consultancy to him. So Jesus sent the resume and things. And this is the letter that came back. From the Jordan management consultants in Jerusalem to Jesus, son of Joseph, care the carpenter's shop, Nazareth. <laughs> Dear sir, thank you for submitting the resumes of the 12 men you have picked for management positions in your new organization. All of them have now taken our tests and now here are the results. It is the opinion of our staff that most of your nominees are lacking in background. <laughs> Education and vocational aptitude for the type of enterprise you want to take. Simon Peter, the one whom you say you want, he, you want him to lead, is emotionally unstable. <laughs> and given to faith. You, you know Simon Peter. Yeah. Now don't look at me like you don't know him. <laughs> Pastor Colof, Simon Peter, his relatives are in the church. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my, I, I just want to keep myself, you know, very... Uh, uh, <laughs> You, you know, you know this Simon Peter when he came back and said, "Jesus, uh, we, we Jesus said, I, 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 I saw Satan fall like lightning." And he said, "Simon Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed." Do you know all those times he had a knife? <laughs> when he was saying, "We have left everything to follow you," he had a, they are like that in the church. They have a knife until you cross them, you never see <laughs> Simon Peter. I mean, can, can you imagine? When Simon Peter got, he got hurt and offended them, he, he said, I'm going fishing. Well, he said, was this not the man who said to Jesus, we have given away everything to follow you. So where did you get the boat from? They are in the church. It may be funny, but I'm painting a picture of you. The man goes fishing and he's fishing, he caught nothing and Jesus stands at the shore and says, hey, you Pete. You got some fish? And John says, it's the master. Now look at what happens. The Bible says that Simon Peter dresses up. Then he jumps into the water to go to Jesus. And I'm saying, when you are in the boat, dry boat, you are naked. When you are going to the water, you dress up. Are you okay? <laughs> so when you come to church and people are behaving funny, they are relatives of Simon Peter. So he's unstable. Let's go. Are you getting something? He said, Andrew has absolutely no leadership quality. He's just a follower. The two brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they place personal interests above company loyalty. You know, they brought their mom to come and lo lobby for them. <laughs> Thomas demonstrates a questioning attitude that will undermine company morale. Matthew, the task collector, even though he's a man of ability, you know what he does. It will project a wrong image about the organization. James, the son of Alphios and Thaddeus, they have radical leanings, and so they are unstable. But there's one candidate who shows great potential. He's a man of ability and resourcefulness. Good with people. He has a keen business mind and has contacts in high places. Highly motivated, ambitious, and responsible. That man is Judas Iscariot. <laughs> we recommend him as your controller and right-hand man. 
We wish you every success in your new venture. Sincerely yours, the Jordan Management Consultants. Now you think about that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm saying all this to say that we all don't qualify. We have things in our lives. But Jesus specializes in using broken people. Number two, I've got to run. I've got a few more minutes. Zacchaeus had spiritual curiosity and desire. Dr. Luke tells us that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. He determined, he said, I must see this Jesus. That should let somebody stop thinking that your world is the whole world. Where you are is not all there is to be. Where you, what you have is not all there is to have. One of the things that have made people small thinkers, and I like, I, I, I look at the things that Pastor Kola is bringing up and the leadership is bringing up to help people handle your money, do all these things, and I'm so excited. Because sometimes we sit in church, listen, prayer alone is not enough. Because I've met a lot of prayerful people who are prayerful fools. Did somebody say, ouch? Yeah, ne never mind, let, 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 let's go. But you see, church, we, we, need to, we need to work on people's minds. And one of the things that have made people small thinkers, have made people timid, is that the church of Jesus, not this one, but the church of Jesus, have constantly fed people, constantly fed people a diet of small thinking. Small thinking will give you small living. Stinking thinking will give you stinking living. Because if Jesus Christ is in you, then understand that you are positioned for greater things in this life. For greater is he that, than the devil that is in, the, in you than the devil that is in the world. There's nothing around you, ladies and gentlemen, that is bigger than the Jesus who is on the inside of you. If the Holy Spirit is there, there's nothing. You are, un, you, you are unlimited. Nothing should be able to hold you back. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come with an announcement. I'm going to recruit some people into a university that has not been built for many people. And that you University is the university of vision. Your pastor is a professor there. That is why he told you, write the vision. He's teaching you. And there's another course that you need to take in that university. It's called Imagineering. The, the Department of Imagineering. Where you sit and you imagine. Let your mind go somewhere because your body will never go where your mind has never been. We are here right now, but I am seeing the kingdom center. that It has already manifested and we are walking in there. We will all be in the same space but we are not all in the same place because some of us are ahead of our time we have seen the invisible hear me ladies and gentlemen if you can perceive it you can receive it if you can confess it you can possess it you must look ahead God said to Abraham that lift up your eyes Lord has chosen the best according to the flesh but begin to imagine for all the land that you see because hear me you don't see with your eyes you see through your eyes you don't ever believe your sight more than you believe your vision because the vision is yet for an appointed time in the end it will speak and not lie your business will flourish your life will flourish your marriage will flourish your ministry will flourish your children will flourish your life will flourish i'm saying you will accomplish big things in this world you will not start as a lion and end up as a mouse you will not start in fire and end up as a smoke in this season ladies and gentlemen rise and determine that you'll be a lion crosser in your family You'll be a barrier breaker in your family. You'll be an innovator in Canada. You will do things that nobody has done before because the spirit of the Most High God is on the inside of you. You have been raised in your family as an economic messiah. There are some Goliaths that are mocking your family. They are saying things to your family that is intimidating them. That is why God raised you for such a time as this. When David picked up those five stones, you and I know that he didn't need the other four. He needed only the first stone. Can I submit to somebody that you are the first stone in your family? I said you are the first stone in your family. Lines that have not been crossed, you cross that line. Your Listen, there are some of you, your, 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 in, your, in your family, nobody can break through. It's like invisible lines have been set where they cannot cross. I've come to announce that the power of God is on the inside of you to begin to cross that line. You, oh my God, I say you will cross that line. 
Oh, in my family, they tell us, hey, women don't marry. You will marry in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, in my family, no woman can have a child unless they have it with other people's husbands. It's not going to happen because you are the first born. Your grandchildren will kiss your photographs. Your great-grandchildren will name children after you because you are a line crosser and you are a barrier breaker. The third thing, and please take this one too serious. I hope I'm doing okay in the house. The third thing is, Zacchaeus repositioned himself. And I, by chance, I think it was last night or so, I found out that the theme for this month in NCA is the time for repositioning. And I said, Lord, you are amazing. You see, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Now, I'm going to talk to somebody today. That life is not cheap. Nobody is going to roll over for you to walk over them. You've got to understand that. That is why I love the lion and the lamb. There must be some fire on the inside of you. That must tell life that you must as well go away because I'm not giving up. You cut off my legs, I will crawl with my hands. You cut off my hands, I will roll until I get it. There must be some fire, some perseverance. There are too many of you who give up too easily. You give up too easily. The enemy knows that he can give you just a little pressure and you give up. Hear me. It is time to dig in. It is time to look at the devil in the eye and tell the devil, listen, listen, one of us is going to go down and it's not me. In this matter, one of us is going down, it's not me. Listen, stick a knife in your teeth and tie a bandana around your, your head like Rambo and draw a line in the sand and tell the enemy, you did this to my great-grandfather, you did this to my grandfather, you did this to my father, but you are picked on the wrong person because I am standing up and I am fighting in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am the ultimate warrior in Christ and I'm roaring like a lion. Give up too early. You roll over too early. Zacchaeus tried to see Jesus, but there were taller people than him all over Jesus. But I realized that wherever you have a desire, your desire must cause you to begin to make plans. And so the Bible says that he ran ahead. He repositioned himself on a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus. This is the season for repositioning. You need to look at where you are and ask yourself, is, is, that the, is it the all there is to be? Some of you are in the wrong crowd. Listen, if you are the smartest amongst your company, you don't belong there. You must be in amongst people who challenge you. People who make you feel stupid. Please forgive the crudeness of my terminology. Listen, if third graders are clapping for you, even though you are 47 years, what, what makes you a champion? You must have heavyweight exercises. You must be challenged. You must reposition yourself. You know something my wife and I have done for years? Every year, Pastor Kola, every year, we determine to find two conferences where we pray nobody knows us and just go and sit down and look at people who are doing things that I want to do and go and sit down anonymously and take notes. I've been to round table, round table, I, I don't know about here, but sometimes... You, you are doing something and say, oh, it's, it's 15, $15 registration. And it's like, oh, somebody told me that the pastor, this is expensive. And I said, try ignorance. It will charge you. I've gone to round, round conference tables. I've registered for myself and my wife, 1500 1500 for just one day, a few hours, four, five hours. And I've sat with the, with the top minds in America. Some of the, I don't like name dropping. It's like mind boggling. And I'm writing notes like it's my last notes I'm writing. I come back, one conference, I came back for just about six hours, I came back with 48 pages of notes. And if I never studied for the next three years, what I had could take me on. And you sit down and you think that is all? No! You've got to reposition yourself. Take that course. Dare to take that course. Because what brought you here may not be that we carries you over there. Yesterday's anointing may be too old for today. There is a place you want to go to and every level demands a new repositioning. There are some friends that you have to look at them and put them on do not call list. You pick up my phone, I can, I can show you. There are some names there. I can't tell who the names are because I've changed the names. It's called don't pick up. <laughs> don't pick up. 
Not your husband, I beg you pardon me. <laughs> oh yes, Pastor Kola, I can show that to you when we finish. I have a few of them, do not pick up. Because, listen, you see those two things be beside my head? They are not trash bags. If you are not going up with me, I'm not going to come down with you. You need to reevaluate your relationships. You need to. What have you become ever since you started working with that person? What has your life become? Some of you are doing okay until the enemy gave you a friend. And if that is your friend, you don't need an enemy. Some friends are nothing but excess baggage in the journey of life. And you know excess baggage, they cost you a lot. Drop them like a hot potato. Drop them. Put them on a do not pick up list. Because they are just dumping things on the inside of you. Listen, you need to distance yourself from ground level people. Ground level thinking. Things that are hindering you. And climb on the tree of better thinking. Better associations. People who put fire under your feet to move forward. It is time to get up higher in prayer. Maybe your prayer life has gone down. Thank God for boot camp. It's time to recharge yourself. Begin to pray. Because in this thing called Christianity, if you, do, if, you don't, if, you don't, if you don't pray, you won't stay. And if you don't fast, you won't last. You need to. Your word life. You need to get the word of God on the inside of you. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus is calling somebody to come up higher. Evaluate where you are today and determine that after this COVID thing, it is time for me now to reposition myself. It's time for me to look at where I am right now. Maybe I, I, I took a course because somebody forced me to take that course. I can turn around. The end of the road is not, the, 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 bend, I beg your pardon, the bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you refuse to turn. I'm going to repeat it. I said the bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you refuse to turn. You can take it as yours. Tell people you, you, you yourself thought about it. Because the greatest ability to, uh, I mean, the greatest manifestation of originality is your ability to conceal your source. So, the first time you quote this, you say, oh, Pastor Frank said it. Next time you quote it, you said, somebody said it. But the third time, say, like I've always been saying, then it becomes yours. <laughs> and all the church said, Amen. are you learning something today? Amen. So Zacchaeus, he repositioned himself. Church, during this boot camp, hear me. I don't care about Last week, I don't care about next week. Powerful times. But if you forget anything that you had this week, please don't forget this. Look at your life and reposition yourself for greater things. Then the final thing is that Zacchaeus received an undeniable conversion. His life turned around. He was dramatically saved and changed that he showed his faith in Christ by making restitution. Now, according to the Old Testament, if you do something and you make restitution, what you, you did wrong, you make it right. You took somebody's one dollar, you give back one dollar. But here Zacchaeus says, I am going to make it right up and above because something has happened to me. Please listen. It is how, it's amazing how sometimes people profess that they have met Jesus. And yet they go out and they curse everybody in the streets. I mean, not you. I'm talking to those who are online. Those who should have come, who live in Calgary and didn't come, you, you are the one I'm talking to. Because if your conversion is genuine, it manifests itself. John the, John the Baptist said, bring fruits worthy of repentance. Now, know this thing. Zacchaeus did not change his job, but he changed the way he did his job. That is a change of heart. Because his job wasn't his problem. His heart was his problem. That is why he took advantage of people. When he got born again, he said, Lord, I want to make this right. And he demonstrated it. I'm going to finish this afternoon. And I'm going to make a call. Maybe three altar calls very quickly. We're going to pray. And I'm going to make a declaration. Man of God, I have seven declarations I want to make over this house before I go. But listen. Man of God, I looked at the verse number seven and said when the people saw it they complained why has he gone to become the guest of a sinner pastor is sharing a vision we need to grow this thing to 2500 to 3000 people in five years we are heading towards that 
And all kinds of people are going to show up in church. How are we going to treat them? Many times we are so big in trying to find out who is, who is talking to who and who is wearing what. How long are their, uh, are their eyelashes? And how long is this? It is, uh, I think their weave has turned a little bit. They need to straighten it. And things that don't matter. But, man of God, I read this and it broke me. It broke me. Because, you know, one time I announced to my church that I'm going back to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because I want to do ministry like Jesus. And one of God realized we don't do ministry like Jesus. I said I want to be somebody. I just want, don't want to be a fan of Jesus. I want to be a follower because there's a difference between a fan and a follower. A fan follows only for the joy. A follower is committed to the cause. Jesus, when he got to where Zacchaeus was in the tree, and he looked up into the tree, if it was to be today's generation, say, hey, yo, Zach, what's up, Zach? You got some ribs? Man, let's go heat up the fire, man. Get off the grill. I mean, in, in a, you, you, you get my drift. Jesus didn't preach a four-point message to him about you going to hell, you dying, you criminal. All he said is, Zacchaeus, let's go home and eat. The man was, con was converted not by preaching a fiery message at that time, but just love. There is a time, ladies and gentlemen, for everything. If we can be sensitive enough and show a little bit of love to the people who we consider unlovable, it will be amazing how our churches will be populated to the glory of Almighty God. Sometimes all they need is for them to know that somebody loves you. So I want to pray for somebody here today. Number one, your life has been in a mess. But I'm asking you to bring that life to Jesus Christ today. I'm not interested in the dynamics. I'm not interested in the details. All I'm interested in is that, Lord, my life is in a mess and I bring it to you. Sometimes it's not all those loud, long-sounding words that matter. Sometimes the greatest prayers you can pray is to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm not correct. Just fix me. Sincerity of heart. No pretense. Say, Lord, do this for me. He did it for me. He can do it for you. Then I'm going to also call people who may not be desperate, as it were. But you realize that you still need Jesus. You have prestige. You have power. You have privilege. You have everything. And yet there's a deep dissatisfaction on the inside of you. I picked things up when I came in here that there's this emptiness on the inside of you. You know something? It's not an, a brand, another car. It's not a bigger wardrobe. It's nothing. It's just Jesus who can fill that gap. And for the third person, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord again. That throughout this pandemic, I let my life slide a little bit. My prayer life, my church attendance. I should have been serving in the house, but now I like to sit behind my iPad and be comfortable. My giving is slacked because nobody challenges me, but I want to do that. So number one, your life is in a mess. You want the Lord to meet you. Number two, there's this emptiness on the inside of you that you say, Lord, fill me again. And the third person is, I want to come back on fire for the Lord. On this second week of boot camp, I want to become that ultimate warrior. Pastor said that you laughed. I wish you didn't laugh. That once upon a time, you were on fire for Jesus. You did event every week you won a soul for Jesus Christ. Until Canada helped you, backslide. You made promises that, Lord, if I got this visa, I will do everything for you. What has happened to you? You were a deacon. You were almost a pastor in your church. But now you sit and you are too comfortable because you are chasing the Canadian dream. Nothing matters except Jesus Christ and him crucified. If I've called your situation right now and you are not ashamed in the house of God, please stand up and meet me here. I want to pray with you and I'll sit down. Maybe you want to bring your, your mess to the Lord. Come. All you want, you, you just this emptiness in you. You don't, you don't have to be ashamed. We have come to the hospital. Jesus said, he that is not sick has no need of a physician. Just come to him. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Say, Lord, here am I. This past two years is like my prayer life is slacked. 
there's no more spirit of prayer on the inside of me. Lord, yes, come, 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 come. I want to pray with you. Don't be shy. You know he's talking to you. You know you are the one that he's talking about. There's one thing to work to work for Jesus. It's another thing to work with him. Is there anybody? There's this thing that always, all the time, that holds you back in your Christianity. You really want to follow Jesus, but the impediments are many. Can somebody join them right now? I want to pray for you. And you may be online today. Wherever you are, it's not too late. Like Zacchaeus, you need a repositioning. You need a turn around. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? He's talking to you. I know he's talking to you. He's talking to you. Remember, Pastor Kola, when Jesus walked through Jericho, it was the last time he was going that way. Because he was never going to come that way again. So for Zacchaeus, it was his last chance. It was his last chance. So from all over the place, I'm waiting for you. I think I can take another 60 seconds and wait for you. Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. You are not going to stand here and tell the whole world about your situation. He knows it already. He says, you know my thoughts from afar off. You know my sitting and my standing. Just come to him. Just come to him. Just come to him. Is there anyone, one more person? Lord Jesus, help us. Listen, my brothers, my sisters, my son, my daughters. As you stand before the Lord, I want you to talk to him. For whatever reason you stand before him, he's there right where you are. Maybe it's a mess. Say, Lord, just help me. Deliver me from this mess. Maybe it's that emptiness. Say, Lord, fill me up again. I have everything, but I have nothing. I have all possessions, but I possess nothing. Say, Lord, help me. And to the other one, I want to rededicate my life to you. I used to be on fire for you. I used to serve in some place. I used to sing. I used to serve. I used to be an usher. I used to be a prayer warrior. But somehow, I allowed the curse of this world to take it. If it's for only this reason why I came today, I think the assignment is settled. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him, and I'm going to pray for you. Wherever you are standing, the Lord Jesus stands with you. He stands with you. Talk to him. Lord, your sons and daughters stand before you. They are talking to you. There's no mess that your message cannot turn around. There's no situation, Lord, that you cannot handle. So I pray, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus. Hear the prayers of these men and women. Fill them up again. Turn them around again. Reposition them again. Rejuvenate them again. Revive them again. Refire them again. Renew them again. Regenerate the one who needs regeneration. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord. Touch you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know some of you are having some serious encounters with the Lord. It is for you that I came. The other time I put on my page that an individual is more important than a crowd. Some people send me and say, what do you mean? And I say, read it well. Jesus was more interested in individuals than in crowds. That is why we need to walk slowly in church. Because there are people that are crying but we don't hear because we are too quick. May the Lord help you today. May the Lord answer your prayer. Lord answer your prayers. May the Lord answer your prayers. Father, I thank you for these men and women who have made who have made a rededication to your cause. I pray in the name of your son Jesus that as they have walked into this chance, Lord, not never forget them. 
Let them remember this day and say forever that on this 10th day of April 2022, I came back to that which truly matters. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, please, before you are seated, just take this card from my hand. And we just fill the card out. We want to follow you up. We want to help you. We just want to follow you up. We want to help you. We want to follow you up. We want to help you. We just want to help you. We just want to help you. It is well. It is well. So when you take the card, please sit down and then fill the card out. And then, Pastor Carlo, what, what, what do we do with the card? They can go. Okay, please, please listen. Just, you see the beautiful lady waving her hand under, underneath the balcony. If you wouldn't mind, please let, just give her just a couple of minutes. Just give her a couple of minutes. Just follow, follow the brother over there and please put your hands together for them. God bless you, son. God bless you. If you are not clapping, you are jealous. How many of you have been blessed today? Hallelujah. The time that Pastor Kolak, how many, how much time did I exhaust?